Volvo, Swedish, stylish and safe. The preserve of people that love their families and love their kids and all that stuff. The original XC90 SUV was a huge hit for the firm and now there's a new one and it's supposedly the best thing ever. Its DRLs look like Thor's hammer. It boasts clean lines and a smoothly boxed off shape. It can seat seven people, so is understandably vast. It's as subtle as a car of its size can be, especially when equipped with the R design spec. Slightly beefy, but not offensive with it. It's much the same with the interior. Yeah, it's a bit black and chrome, but that is just down to spec. Volvo's interior designers have worked hard to create a relaxing, stylish space to enjoy your time in. And in fact, I think the XC90 is the coolest SUV out there. And to explain why, we need to go back in time a bit and have a look at something of a cultural phenomenon. Some of you may remember a book called The Game. The Game told the story of nerdy freelance journalist Neil Strauss and how he went from balding, spotty journo to one of the greatest pickup artists of all time. It became something of a bible to legions of men all over the world. They used techniques from it to game the opposite sex in order to spend some um, quality time with them. Now, one of the most popular techniques from it that the pickup artists, or PUAs as they were known, used was something called peacocking. The idea being you go into a bar or a club and wear something outlandish like an eye patch or a feather bow or a cowboy hat, something like that, to make you stand out, to seem exciting and different from everybody else. Now, it got very popular to the point that no one really stood out because everyone looked a bit ridiculous, like Liberace on a farm. It all got a bit silly. Some still think that standing out matters, which is why if I was in the market for an SUV, I'd probably buy a Range Rover Sport. It comes with a big V8, makes a terrific noise, and promises to be able to travel on any terrain anywhere at a moment's notice. It's also covered in shiny bits. I would make people turn their heads and look at me, peacocking my way down the street. Except that wouldn't work, would it? Because there's loads of those around, absolutely loads of them. And when you think about it, do you really want to spend time with someone who keeps banging on about how successful and brilliant and great they are? Or would you rather get to know someone who's secure in who they are? Because they won't care about big noise and de rigueur looks. They'll care about what's best for them, what suits their needs and what's best for their family. They'll probably drive an XC90. This is the T6 version. It's got a two litre turbo and supercharged engine and it kicks out 320 horsepower and 295 pounds and feet. 0 to 62 takes six and a half seconds. Its top speed is a little over 140 miles an hour. Volvo says that it might just do over 35 MPG in British money as well. That's pretty cool. But while it's quick, is it any good to drive? Seeing as pretty much everyone who's driven this thing absolutely adores it, I'm going in with an impression that it might be quite good. So let's start with the basics. The steering. It's not the heaviest in the world, it's not the lightest in the world, it's a bit floaty, you don't get massive feedback from it, but this is a nearly three ton SUV. The brakes, they do feel quite good, they do manage to stop this thing, and with the power this offers, the fact the brakes are good, definitely a positive. Man, this thing shifts in dynamic mode. You can change your driving modes with this natty little wheel down here. I don't know what they've done with the mapping. If you give it just a little tickle, the whole car just kind of goes and it fires you off into the distance in a very unexpected, unvolvo-ish, weird way. And bizarrely for me, I actually prefer the car in comfort. It's just a bit much dynamic. It feels all jolly and what have you, but around town it can catch you unawares. In comfort, it's quiet, it's delightful. The suspension, the ride, it just flows over the road. I can drive it through the rough car parks around here and all the bumpy, lumpy roads, and it's really, really pleasant. There are a few things that do irk me somewhat. The infotainment thing in the middle 
it's great but there's lots of button presses to get to things whereas previously buttons would do it now you have to kind of navigate menus that's a pain in the bum the interior is a bit dark not a massive fan of that and this whole sculpted dash thing it's not very exciting to look at is it this is also vast it is enormous and i know it has to be it seats seven people and takes all of the stuff you can possibly imagine but threading it around city streets which let's face it is where most of these are going to live it's a bit tricky and this one doesn't have a reversing camera that's an essential there's only so much confidence you can put in pips and noises and little lights coming up on the big screen in all this is a really good car though you know it does have its faults but it's comfortable it's smooth it's quiet it's quick this petrol engine is so refined and so quiet you do get a bit of tire roar from the road but not too much of it the point with this car though is with other cars in its class say a Porsche Cayenne or a Range Rover with other cars like that, there's lots of flashy, shiny bits that make you feel very excited that you're driving a big, fast car and it's big and exciting and important and you have to pay attention to every little bit of it. Whereas here, it just gets on with what it needs to do. There's no unnecessary buttons and switches, apart from some of the virtual ones, but there's no clutter. It's clean. Now, of course, Volvo being Volvo, there's safety everything. Volvo wants to make a, a death-proof car at some point in the future and it's well on its way to doing so. If you take a look in the engine bay, this is fascinating because even though the front of the car is enormous, it's absolutely massive. Because it's only got a tiny little two-litre engine, it's stuffed really far back and the rest is just crash protection. And Volvo has even gone so far as the engine cover, it's soft and squidgy. So if you do run over a really tall person, they manage to get their head so far back they get to the engine, it'll bounce gently off it. That's cool, there's airbags everywhere, there's safety assist this, safety assist that to stop you from crashing or exploding. It's, it's mega safe. If you're looking at one of these because you want your child to be protected, your child will be protected. Volvo doesn't muck about with this kind of stuff. Volvo just wants you to know that if there's a crash, or if it thinks there's going to be a crash, you'll be as safe as you can possibly be. That's a good feeling. I don't want to die, and I'm pretty sure I won't die in a Volvo. As well as being rather good to drive, it's wildly popular. The first 1,927 first edition cars sold out in 47 hours before anyone had even driven them. The old car lasted 12 years with minor tweaks here and there and found a huge fan base. So I wonder just how long this one's going to last. Here's the deal with the new XC90. It's like the person that doesn't scream and shout about how brilliant they are, how successful they are. It just gets on with things. The kind of person that you really want to be. Sweet, are we, uh, we done? Because yeah. um, I'm off to the pub. Cheers, man.